Hello, Dread Mechanic here, and today I would like to do something a little bit different. Behind me you can see a forklift truck that I've been working on, and today I would like to show you how you can build your own and demonstrate some of the mechanical blocks and how we can operate them using vanilla controls. So, as you can see, we have four wheels, we have tilt control, and we have mast control. And we also have a little bit of power and a whole bunch of event controllers that are going to operate all of this stuff. So if we jump into the cockpit, we can see how I've already set up some of the controls. We can drive forwards, we can drive back, we can brake, we can apply the parking brake, and if we hit number six and turn on our thrusters, we can then operate the mechanical controls. So we can press forwards and backwards, our tilt forwards and backwards and then we can press the jump and crouch buttons to lower and raise the mast and I've also equipped it with some mag plates that we can lock down when we need to and a couple of cameras so that we can see things so when it comes to building one for ourselves the first thing we're going to need is a row of batteries so we'll place six in the center and then next we'll place some ion thrusters so we'll have one facing forwards and we'll have one facing backwards and then we'll need a control seat so i'm going to go with the buggy cockpit and we can throw on some armor blocks so we can start attaching other things and to make life a little bit easier we'll put mirror mode on and then we can place some armor blocks Then we can place a couple of suspensions, so we'll have a set there, and a set there, and then we can have another pair of thrusters in the back, one facing up and one facing down, and then we will also add in four event controllers, and these are going to be triggered by those thrusters, and then we can add a pair of hinges to the front, and a pair of armor blocks and then we can add a pair of pistons and to help with the structural stability and to connect these two pistons into the same grid we can use some of the half panel tip armor plates so we'll have one there then we'll have one there and then in the gap in between we can place two of them However, they are not connected to the subgrid yet. Then we can place two armor blocks on the front and then throw in a couple of merge blocks. That will now connect both those grids up and we can delete all of that. So now that is one grid connected by these panels just here. And then we can add a few more armor blocks to the top of each of these pistons. And then we can just about squeeze two more pistons into here. And again, we want to make this all one grid. So we will add a few more merge blocks. Let them join up. Then we can remove them. And so if we go into the control panel and select our top two pistons and reverse them down. We can now work on the forks. And again, we want to merge these two piston heads. So we'll throw in two more merge blocks, let them attach, and then remove them. And then we can add some armor plating to the bottom. And then from there, we can add a couple of the half armor panels. And then we can add a few more panels to create the beginnings of our fork blades. And then we can add a few more panels for the backrest. And then we can add a bunch of mag plates onto the fork blades. And in order to be able to see what we're doing, we are going to add a couple of cameras. So I'm going to put one on the top of the mast. And then I'm going to add a half panel armor plate down here. And then one of the two by one bases 
so that we have somewhere to put a camera that's down here. And then for some additional power and a little bit of more realistic look, we can add a pair of reactors and pretend they're a gas tank. And then we can strap that all down with some more half panel armor plates and maybe some grills across the front of those reactors. And then we can add a few beam blocks just for a little bit of extra detail. And then we can do some more armor panels as some rudimentary wheel arches. And then we should just be able to squeeze in some of the half panel 2x1 base plates onto either side. And then a few more half panels at the sides. And then for our roll cage we can use a few more of the half panels. And for a bit of extra counterweight we can add a load of heavy plates to the bottom. And there we go, that is the basics of everything we are going to need. Now we just need to jump into the control seat and program it all. And now that we've jumped in the control seat and we've got everything named, we can move on to the programming. So in order to create the forklift controls, we are first going to need these four event controllers that I have named Mast Down, Forward, Reverse and Up. And then we need the ion thrusters that we built and they'll be named likewise down, forward, reverse and up. And so the first thing we'll do is we'll set up the mast lift controls. So we will click on the controller mast up. We will set it to thrust percentage. We will set it to greater than 10% because ions don't go higher than 30 I believe it is in atmospheres. And then we can select our up control thruster. And then once we've done that we can go to select actions and we can find all of our pistons and the next step is to add the set velocity controls and in order to make this mast lift up when we hit the up thruster what we are going to do is we are going to select the first piston choose set velocity and set it to a nice reasonable speed so 0.25 will be fine for now and then when the thruster stops firing we want it to reset the piston back to zero. Now we don't want to use the reset velocity function because that actually resets pistons back to minus 0.5 so that they automatically retract. So what we need to do is use the set velocity option again and just choose zero. And then we will do the same thing for the bottom right piston. We will choose set velocity 0.25 and then set velocity zero. And now because the other set of pistons are inverted, we need to do things the opposite way around. So with the 0-2 pistons, we will again choose set velocity, and this time choose minus 0.25. And they can still reset to 0. And then if we move over to our mast down controller, it will be set up pretty much exactly the same. Thrust percentage, greater than 10%. We will choose our control thruster down, and then hit select actions. And for this controller, we need to do it the opposite way around to what we just did with the previous controller. So we will select the first two pistons, hit set velocity, choose minus 0.25. and set them back to zero as well. And then for the second set of pistons, we will choose set velocity and go with positive 2.5. And set them back to zero again. 
And now that we've done that, we can hit the space bar or the jump button, depending what platform you're on. And it will lift the mast up. And if we hit the crouch button, it will drop it back down again. And now we can move on to the tilt controls. So we can select the controller mast forward. And again, thrust percentage as the event, greater than 10%. We will choose our forward control thruster and once again hit select actions. Now to make the tilt controls is a little bit easier than making the lift controls. All we need to do is choose set velocity and one RPM and then select reset velocity. And we can do the same with the other hinge. Then we can move to our reverse controller and as always it is thrust percentage greater than 10% select our reverse control thruster and choose select actions and then choose minus 1 rpm and reset velocity and then minus 1 rpm and reset velocity and now when we hit forwards and backwards we can tilt the mast forwards and backwards now you can see the wheels are spinning as we are tilting the mast forwards and backwards and that's because they are all using the control seat. So what we need to do is create a group for our control thrusters and then we can add that to our hotbar, have it turn on and off. And then when we turn those thrusters off, it no longer activates the event controllers. And then we can add a few more groups to the toolbar, including our mag plates, so we can lock and unlock them. And we can also add both of our cameras so we can see what we're doing. And on the subject of thrusters, we should also turn off the inertial dampeners so that when we're driving around, the thrusters aren't reacting and trying to control the mast. And now that that is all done, we can cut it all down and we can give it a test. So if we apply our parking brake, turn on our mast controls, tilt forward, you can see that we've lifted off the ground now, so that is a little bit too much tilt. So we need to have a rethink about some of our hinge limits. So 15 is far too much. So something like that seems a little bit more sensible. So we'll go with two and a half degrees for the forward tilt. And if we tip it back, that seems like a reasonable angle and we'll set the rear angles to minus 15 and now we have a functioning vanilla forklift truck with tilt and mast lift And now for the drive controls, and in order to make it drive like a proper forklift, we need to turn off the steering on the front wheels, and only steer from the back. And because we don't want to be going too quickly, we can set the speed limit and the power to a fairly low setting. And we'll set the strength on the suspension to about 25%. So, we can activate our camera, drive forwards, apply our parking brake, then we can activate our mast controls, deactivate the mast controls, disengage the brake, drive forwards, apply the brake, activate the controls again, and tip all the way backwards. And then we can lock down our mag plates, disengage the brake, deactivate the mast controls, and drive away. Then we can drive over to our platform, parking brake, mast controls, up we go, tilt forwards, Braking controls off.
brake and controls back on. Deactivate our minor locks. Controls and brake back off. And out we go. So there you go, that's my little guide on how to make a vanilla forklift. Thanks for watching and goodbye for now.